Hey, what's up, Trace? My name is Stu, and we just want to give a massive welcome to each and every one of you that are joining with us. We're so thankful that you're here. Although we can't meet in person, we're still able to do this online. So thanks for taking the time out today to join with us. Now, if you've been watching for a while or you're new, we believe the community is so important. And so we would like to hear from you, and we would like you to take your next step. We believe everybody has a next step to take here. So you can do that by texting next step to 69922 and somebody else will follow up with you. We believe community is so important, especially during this time, so make sure you do that. We also wanna say a massive thanks to all those that have been partnering with us in generosity throughout this season. We cannot do what we do without you, so we truly wanna say thanks to you for that. And if that is something that you would like to do, if you would like to start partnering with us here at Trace, you can do that by texting Trace COS to 77977. And finally, we want to hear from you. We have, we have a team of people that are here right now that are looking forward to connecting with you digitally so make sure as you watch this you are engaging in our live chat you're leaving a comment you're sharing it with our friends we want to get the gospel out there and we need your help to do so but we also want to hear from you we also want to see where you're watching from what you're doing today so make sure that you engage with us as you watch that's all that we've got so we hope that you enjoy the service and thanks for checking us out stand as we begin by worshiping Christ. Here we go. Joyful 
wherever you're at, will you lift it up this morning? Amen. Well, welcome to Trace Church. No matter where you are gathered, we just want to welcome you guys this morning. Thank you so much for taking the time and gathering with us. I know it's that time of year. It's, it's Christmas time. It's a time where we always want to be focusing on hope, spreading hope, and just that message wherever and to whoever we can. And I know we've all experienced a very similar year, even though our circumstance may look different. And I'm not going to lie, that, uh, that reservoir of hope has, has waxed and waned throughout the year. Um, but if I can get real with, with everyone for a moment, um, a couple weeks ago, this is, this, is a, this is good news, this is a good story, my attitude was not. Um, a couple weeks ago in Australia, there is so many, or excuse me, so little COVID cases that Hillsong Church, the massive, massive multi-campus, thousands of people, huge church in Australia, they said, we can open, we can open back, back up. We can have thousands of people in our worship center, no masks. And I got to tune in on YouTube and the place was, it was packed. And I saw them rejoicing and praising God and just saying, thank you. Thank you for doing this for us so we can praise you without any sort of distractions or any sort of hurdles or any, any barrier. And so for about two to three seconds, I had a negative attitude of going, that's not my circumstance. So why are you guys praising him like that? Because that's, that's not what the world is experiencing. And for about half a second, I had this posture of, how dare you even? How, how dare you boast a circumstance that not everyone is experiencing? And that, that three-second sour attitude that I had led to an entire night and an entire next day of just conviction. Because I felt the Holy Spirit get in my face and say, you know what, Tyler, I bet a year ago, when things were fine at Trace Church and things were going well for your life, someone tuned into Trace and said, someone overseas who can't worship publicly, who needs to escape to praise God, and, and tunes in and says, that's not me. And so in that moment, I thought, regardless, regardless of the circumstance or the perspective or the pain that I may be going through, I need to have joy in my life. And so something that Pastor Aaron taught me years ago, he said, Tyler, sometimes in your life, you need to borrow hope from someone else borrow hope, even when you, when you look at life laid out before you and yet God is doing something awesome in someone else's life, whether it's healing or reconciling a relationship or providing financially, you need to see that and borrow that hope and say, you know what, I rejoice, I praise God because of what he's doing over there. And it reminds me of a scripture in Philippians chapter one, Paul the apostle is writing to this church in Philippi and he is in chains, he is in prison listen to the, one of the first things he says. He says, I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. It is right for me to feel this way about you since I have you in my heart and whether I am in chains or defending and confirming the, the gospel, all of you share God's grace with me. And so that's something that I want to challenge and encourage everyone, and I don't want anyone to miss. No matter of what we're going through, we need to be borrowing hope. Or if that hope is overflowing in your life, then I ask, will you just share it freely and lift up someone else? because I know we are all going through something different. Will you pray with me? Father, I thank you for this time that we have to come and worship you because I know the rest of the world is going through something very different. So God, our circumstance, our season, I pray that you continually teach us. Help us to have an open mind, open ears, and an open heart to have you just come and infiltrate every priority for every area that needs to be groomed or grown. God, we don't want to let another day pass where we're just thinking of ourselves. I'm speaking on behalf of myself. I don't want another day to pass. Let me always be 
thinking and speaking of Jesus. It's in his name we pray. Amen.
great morning it's been worshiping with all of you here and no matter where you are gathered this morning thank you guys so much for just gathering with us and lifting up his name you can be seated Good morning, Trace. My name is Daisha. I'm the director of connections here at Trace. Um, just welcome you. I love that song and thinking about Christmas time. That is just the definition of what God did for us with uh, baby Jesus. He put it all on the line, and that is what we're here to gather about, to celebrate about. And uh, that's the reason that we gather uh, primarily is to worship God in any circumstance for what he's done uh, in all of that. And so a couple of announcements for you. Christmas Eve is coming up this week. We've got three services, two, four, and six. We are taking reservations. Uh, being safe with COVID and everything right now. However, our 4 p.m. is basically full at this point. So uh, look online, but you can sign up still for two and six, and hopefully we can see you in person. Very excited about that. Also, this is our last week for quarantine kits. That's an effort we're doing just to bless people who are especially stressed out this season or this year. Uh, so if there's somebody in your life um, you wanna contribute to that effort, we're still taking donations. This will be the last week. So bring in those supplies, check out the app for more details on quarantine kits. And um, next week, December 27th, we'll be online, but I've got good news for you. Speaking of hope, first week in January, we are back in Trace in person. So I wanna invite you to come join us if you can. We'll still be doing safety measures um, for COVID related stuff, but if you can come back, that is some good news. And uh, we are looking forward to seeing you in person. So speaking of good news, let's pray over our, our morning. God, thank you so much for uh, this church, thank you for the hope that we have in your son and that um, we get to focus on that right now. And whether any of us are in a season where we're needing to borrow somebody's hope or whether we have it to share, uh, just open our hearts to do either one. And uh, open our hearts to the message this morning as well, God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, there's people in the room. <laughs> it feels good. Man, it's so good to see your faces. And many of you watching online right now are like, what's up? I thought we were online only today. Well, the only way that you would have been invited this morning if you're on a serve team, so that sucks for you. You should have been on a serve team. But for all of you that got to be here, excited that you're here. Seriously, it really is. You have no idea how good it feels to be up here and to actually look at real people instead of just looking at a camera. Uh, and so, man, I am pumped to have each and every one of you here. Well, hey, you know this. There's a sentiment that we, that we share a lot around here at Trace, and it goes like this, that most of us, that most of us are like the rest of us. But there's a sentiment that I'm going to share in just a moment that's not just a sentiment that we would all collectively understand and kind of get. I think it's going to be a sentiment that's echoed around the world. As we round the turn of 2020, I think all of us are ready to have this year behind us. And one of the things that's not been afforded to us yet, that will be afforded to us in the coming months, in the coming years, is something called hindsight. And maybe you can appreciate the irony this morning that in, in the old adage that hindsight is 2020. But you get this. Like when you're in the middle of it, when you're in the middle, whatever it is, when you're in the middle of a crazy season, of a chaotic season, when you're in the middle of it, it's hard to see things clearly. All the tension and all the confusion around us just it keeps us from looking at things clearly. But once enough time has elapsed, once enough time has been removed and there's some tension and the tension begins to subside, I believe we can begin to see things a little more clearly. So in the coming weeks, in the coming months, I have no doubt that we're gonna be able to look back and see how God worked in and through this season, but we're also going to see that there were probably some unintended consequences and circumstances. You probably know this, but everything looks and feels different in hindsight 
than it does in the moment. For instance, maybe you had a high school crush or relationship. Maybe it was your first true romance and, and things didn't go well. It started to fall apart and all of a sudden, like your crush, you feel like God has abandoned you because you thought this was the real, like this was the person. And then you went to your high school reunion about 20 years in and you see that person that you thought like was gonna be your soulmate for the rest of your life. And then you see them and you're like, oh, thank you, Jesus. Like I dodged a bullet there. And yeah, hindsight Hindsight causes everything to look different. When we're, about, when we're removed from that moment for a certain amount of time, we're able to see things differently. The other day I was talking with our team about how this has been a year of kind of reactive decision making, which is never ideal. In other words, we didn't have a whole lot of time or experience, and so we just simply had to react with what, whatever was in front of us at any given point in time. And because of that, there will be some un, unintended consequences. There will be some unintended outcomes that we couldn't have possibly anticipated. In the coming months and years, hindsight will help us to look back and see that, yes, God was still working in and through this time. That no doubt he was working in and through this crazy season, but hindsight will also be able to show us that there were some unintended outcomes. In other words, we probably are being wounded along the way more than we even know that we are in the moment. I want to share some of these unintended outcomes, these outcomes that we probably haven't taken the time to, to focus on enough and how we can poten potentially be um, a remedy to some of them and how God has called us to be Christ followers and how we can step into some of these situations and try to make the story that someone else gets to tell better. And I'm going to share some things to you, listen to me, that are going to be discouraging, but to borrow from a statement that I heard a pastor that I really admire say, we don't share these things to you to discourage you. We share these things with you to bring courage into you. And so let's look at some of the unintended circumstances from 2020. The UN just determined that 130 million people will die this year as a result of the economic damage of this pandemic. Just let that sit. And a lot of that is due to a lack of nutrition, to a lack of food that will just unfortunately roll out because of all of the economic ramifications. And so we've determined that we wanna kind of step into that as much as we can. And you know that we've been doing this for several years here at Trace where we put together this food packing event and we had to postpone it, it was gonna be in November, but I think that's probably a blessing because we'll likely put this back in place in either January or February. And we're going to wait until we kind of see what regions of the world need food the most. And we're going to pack 50,000 meals. We're going to pack 50,000 meals and send them to the people who need them the most. Here recently, a CD survey was put out and found that one in four young adults between the ages of 18 and 24 had seriously considered suicide during this pandemic. Which is why as a church, and again, if you've been watching or you've been here for any amount of time, you know that we've decided we wanna partner with you and pay for everyone here to have a session of counseling because we know you likely need it, that there's going to be some unintended outcomes to this season. You've heard me share this, that 20% of churches in America will close. In September of this year, over half of kids, think about this, over half of kids 11 to 17 reported having thoughts of self-harm and suicide. I'm not okay with that. I hope you're not okay with that. The last statistic I'll share with you is the number of people looking for divorce right now is up 34%. And honestly, guys, I could go on and on and on. And I don't share those things with you to discourage you. I share those things with you to bring courage into you because as a leader, it is our job to define reality, but more importantly, it's our job to show you how we need to respond to this reality. Trace, this is the kind of stuff that the church was created for. This is our moment. I don't know if you're watching this right now or you're listening to this later. Guys, this is our opportunity to step into a season and illuminate the light of Jesus in us. This is our time. This is what God created his church for. We don't sit around and wait for government, government agencies to implement strategies or remedies to these problems. No, we press into them. And listen to me. 
I'm not sure we're ever more faithful as Jesus followers than when we step into other people's pain with them, when we fight for them. And so let me ask you a question. If it's raining in someone else's life, are you willing to get wet? Because my guess is you know someone right now that is hurting. It's raining in their life. Are you willing to get wet? Because listen to me, the world is in desperate need for the hope of Jesus right now. Desperate need. And we are the answer. As a church, we've been working hard on how we're going to respond to the current reality in front of us. And I've been talking to you about how we're making some changes in 2021 And two of the things we're going to do is we're going to start a men's and women's ministry because we know that people are going to need more opportunities to connect and reconnect. We're also going to start a stewardship ministry, and uh, that may be foreign to you. There's not a whole lot of churches that do that. But we're investing in something on your behalf called Ramsey Plus. It's through Dave Ramsey, and we're making a financial investment in this where we're going to be able to give you tools to help you get out of debt and to have a budgeting app and to help you to grow in generosity. And you're going to hear more about that in the months to come. Again, like I mentioned already, you know that we're willing to partner with you and pay for a counseling, sh- uh, counseling session with Dr. Trent. And for, I mean, guys, I, I think you know this, but like that's completely confidential. I have no idea how many of you have met with him or have set up something with him. I have no idea. It's completely confidential. You just need, you need to know that. And for what it's worth, I'm going to seek out counseling. Not with Dr. Trent because he's my friend. I don't want him telling me what to do. But I'm going to seek out counseling this year. I've never done that in my adult life. I've never done that. But my guess is, I was telling the team, my team this the other day, I think I've taken on some wounds that I, that I honestly can't see right now. And I don't want to get too far removed and look back and be like, holy cow, that, that did more damage to me than I thought. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to be proactive. I'm going to seek out counseling. I'm, I'm not ashamed at all to admit that. And I hope that you wouldn't be ashamed if you feel like you need help to take another step to invite professional counsel into your life. I think that would be beneficial. Here's what you need to know, guys. I am done. I am done reacting I am done reacting to all the craziness and chaos in front of us. I'm ready to respond. And when we respond, that means we're going to think through it. We're going to be intentional about it. And I was just telling our team this morning when we were meeting and praying over the service today, I believe 2021 is going to be a year of help, hope, and healing. And it will be for so many, but listen to me, in order to do that, I need your help. Everything that I just mentioned to you is going to take a ton of resource. And we're hoping to resource all of those initiatives through our end of the year giving this year. And maybe somebody right now in here or watching online is like, Aaron, really is now the time to talk about giving? I don't think now's the best time to be talking about giving. I could not disagree more. Now is the time that we need to prepare for whatever opportunities that God puts in front of us in 2021. It will be a year of help, hope, and healing. We have the opportunity as a church to remove limitations and obstacles so that we can get people to Jesus because he is the light of the world. And no matter how dark people's lives feel right now, he can illuminate himself in that darkness. The darkness will never overcome the light, as John tells us in this first chapter of his gospel. Church, it is our time to do our work. I'm going to pray for us, and then I'm actually going to get into my sermon because that had nothing to do with my sermon. Uh, I just had to get that out. So let me pray, and then we'll dive in. Father, uh, God, I know it's easy probably for some of us just to start to feel overwhelmed and overcome by all the hurt in the world. And it's easy for us to be so overwhelmed by it all that we kind of take a back seat and it's like, man, I can't possibly do anything about all of that. But Father, you you didn't call us or ask us to do something about all of it. You just asked us to step into it. And yeah, we may not be able to change the world, but we can change our world, the world around us. But God, we need direction and and help, God, and God, we need resource. You, you, you know this. And so I, I pray, God, that you would just put it on the hearts of all the people that are watching right now, listening later in this room, that they would partner with us so that we are fully prepared 
that resource is not an obstacle for us to extend hope when life hurts in 2021, that we are fully prepared to meet the needs of people. And so, God, I pray that you would just work in the hearts and minds of everyone here and watching. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, today we are wrapping up our series, Good News. And I thought it would be a great time to uh, show you or maybe remind you of a passage of Scripture. It's a specific verse in the Bible that I would argue is probably one of the most hopeful verses in the entire Bible. Uh, when I look back at the time of my life where I had the most failures that were following me and living in a lot of regret, uh, this particular verse of the Bible actually gave me a lot of hope, and my hope is that it could give you some hope today as well. So if you have your Bibles with you, feel free to turn them on or turn them open, find your way to Romans chapter 8. And the verse that we're going to land on is Romans 8, 28. Some of you know what that verse is. But before we get there, I actually want to share several of the verses that lead up to that because they are full, listen to me, they are full of good news. And when some of the current or more modern translators were translating into like the NIV version of the Bible, they made a subheading. It wasn't in the original text, but they made a subheading that actually reads, present suffering and future glory. Now just think about that. Present suffering and future glory. Doesn't that speak to our current situation pretty well? Present suffering, but our hope for future glory, that God will redeem it because he is in the business of redeeming things. There's nothing, nothing outside of God's, well, let me say that differently. There's no, nothing that can limit the redemptive qualities of God. He can redeem it all. And so before we land in Romans 8.28, I want to begin in Romans 8, 18, and this is going to be kind of a shotgun approach. I'm just going to go through these and allow them to kind of speak for themselves, but also to illuminate the good news that they bring to us this morning. Romans 8, 18 begins like this. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be, will be revealed in us. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us in us. Speaking back to something I mentioned earlier, I think when we're in the midst of it, whatever it is, when we're in the midst of storms and everything is just crazy and chaotic, it's hard to see clearly or even to think clearly about what we have that's awaiting us, that what we have to look forward to. And I've said this before, but I really do believe that if God just gave you a three-second glimpse, listen to me, just a three-second glimpse of heaven, of what awaits you if you're a follower of Jesus, just three seconds, and let's just go ahead and count it out. Ready? One, two, three, and that's it. If he gave you a three-second glimpse of heaven, of what awaits you, I believe it would change our entire perspective of how we endure our suffering and our trials and tribulations that we have in our life right now. But my hope is that we would be reminded of that. That yes, in the midst of so many circumstances that not only are not ideal, but just, just suck, right? I mean, somebody actually got me the t-shirt. I don't know if you saw it yet. Embrace the suck, 2020. Thanks for getting me the t-shirt. Because that, there's a certain aspect of it. It's like, yes, we get that. We get it. But we know what awaits us, that there's a moment coming in our future where there is no more pain, there is no more suffering, there's only bliss, there's only the presence of God and his glory that surrounds us. And that should give us hope. And speaking of hope, that leads me to the next passage in Romans 8, 23. Paul says this, he says, and we believers also groan even though we have the Holy Spirit within us as a foretaste of future glory. For we long for our bodies to be released from sin and suffering. We too wait with eager hope. Have you ever put those two words together? Because I haven't. I was reading that this week. I'm like, I love the sound of that. I love those two words next to each other. Eager hope. Eager hope. We too wait with eager hope for the day when God will give us our full rights as adopted children, including the new bodies he has promised us. Eager hope. Being in ministry as long as we have, Emily and I have been invited into many people's stories of pain. It could be mental pain, relational pain, and sometimes it's physical pain. And just the other day, we were talking about a friend of ours, and we were mentioning how, man, this person 
has had more than their fair share of pain. It's like, God, could you just ease up on them a little bit? And that could be your story too. Or maybe your story, it reads a little bit different. Maybe you've been caring for a spouse whose mind is deteriorating rapidly. Or maybe it's a parent. And you wait with eager hope because the husband or the wife or the father or the mother that you once knew, it's just not the same person anymore. And it's hard. And I know some of you have had to navigate that and are navigating that. I know how difficult that can be when you have someone that you love dearly and you just see them become almost a different person because their mind isn't, isn't what it used to be. Eager hope. One of the things that I do from time to time, if I have the opportunity, when I'm standing beside a hospital bed, when somebody's taking their last breaths, if I can, I love to put their hand in mine, and I don't always know if they can comprehend what I'm saying, but I just want to remind them, you're just moments away. You're just moments away from seeing Jesus. You're just moments away from receiving your new body that doesn't age, where your mind doesn't deteriorate, where your body doesn't fail. And I love reminding people of the eager hope that they would have in the promises that God has given us. Let me jump down to verse 26. In the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness, we do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. Man, that is good news. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. Have you ever been there? Where there was so much tension, where there was so much pain in a moment that you didn't know what to say or how to pray. Some of you have been there over this last season because of homeschooling. Let's be honest. Right, I can't tell you how many times that either my wife or I have been trying to help one of our kids, and it's like, I don't know why it's not connecting. I have no idea. I don't know. How do you get on your classroom? I don't know how to do that equation. That's not how I learn math, right? And then you start to channel your inner Carrie Underwood, Jesus, take the wheel. I mean, because you can't figure this stuff out like you know what it looks like. But let me get serious for a second. Those moments in life where you can't, you can't say it. You can't get it out. And you try to, and then you just keep falling on words that won't come to mind or it won't come out right. And can you imagine the Spirit of God? We talked about the gift of the Holy Spirit a couple of weeks ago and how incredible of a gift that is and how good news, how much of that is good news. That the Spirit of God, think about it, it's happening. Listen, it's happening. Goes to Jesus and says, <laughs> Let me tell you what he's trying to say. Let me, let me tell you what she's trying to say. Guys, that is good news. The spirit of the living God is going to our heavenly father, going to Jesus on our behalf when we can't even get the words out. And that leads me to Romans 8, 28. We know that in all things God works. I want to stop there. In all things, in all things, I'm going to count to three. Everybody say all things. One, two, three. God works. I could say it a dozen more times. In all things, God works. What are you going through right now? What are you enduring right now? In all things, God works. In all things, God works for the good of those who love him and who have been called according to his purpose. All things. That means a lost job, a lost friend, or a lost spouse. He works in all of our problems, our pain, and pandemics. He's working when we feel that all hope is lost, when we feel we're too far gone to be found. He's working in our waiting. He's working in our weariness. And he's working even when we fail to worship him. Our God is always working. And his promise to you and his promise to me is that if we will entrust him with our lives, if we will love him, 
that he'll use it all, not just the pretty parts of your life, not just the best parts of your life. No, he wants it all. And his promise to you that if you will love him and trust him according to his will and his works, that he will use it all. And I've been living enough life now in my 41 years of life that I can tell you that I've seen how God can take things that are broken that I thought were too far gone and he can do something beautiful with it. That he can take your pain that you would imagine never would have any redeeming value whatsoever and he cultivates it into purpose. You see, when you entrust your life to God and you give it all to him, all of it, all things God's working, all things God works for good, when you entrust it all to him, your failures will never be final. I don't know if you know who Michael Jr. is, but he's a Christian comedian who's absolutely hilarious. If you're ever having a bad day, just look him up on YouTube and it'll, it'll change. Uh, and he has a unique way of actually speaking into the very thing that I'm talking about right now. So take a moment and watch this video. So this is how break time works. Some people ask questions sometimes. They're like, Michael, how do you come up with that stuff all of a sudden? Well, let me back it up a little bit. When I was a kid, I used to struggle with my reading. I mean, struggle. I couldn't sound stuff out phonetically. First of all, the word phonetically starts with a P. Let's start there. So I couldn't do that. So I would struggle with my reading. I'd have to look at things like seven different ways to determine what a word was. By the time I got to high school, I was really good at this to the point where people didn't know I wasn't really reading. I was just looking at things different really, really fast. Now as an adult, I read just fine, but I still have this ability to look at not just words, but people and situations and circumstances seven different ways almost immediately. So when I'm sitting in the audience taking a break and talking to people, as I'm talking to them, I'm looking at things, not only what's going on, but what they're saying seven different ways. So that very thing from my past that looked like it was a setback actually turns out it was a setup so I can do what I do today. It's not that much difference for you. There's probably something from your past that was a setback. I'm here to let you know it's probably a setup so you can get some amazing stuff done. I'm Michael Jr. We're going to fade to black. Actually, I'm already black. So we're just going to end now. <laughs> Maybe that's why James, the brother of Jesus, said this. Consider it pure joy. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Because you know the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. You see, whenever our lives have been tested and tried, yet we stand firm in the promises of God and we persevere, I think it produces something better. It doesn't mean that everything's always gonna be the way that you want it to be. It doesn't mean you won't take on some damage. It doesn't mean that there won't be some consequences to our actions. And it doesn't mean that sometimes things just won't suck, right? Embrace the suck, keep coming back to it. But the longer that I've lived, the longer that I've lived and the more trials I have faced, I believe I can say with confidence this right here, and maybe you need to write this down, that God is producing something new in our pain. That God is producing something new in our pain. As we approach 2021, a year that I'm praying br brings help, hope, and healing, I want this to be our prayer. And so what I want to do right now, wherever you're at, if you're watching from home or obviously don't do this if you're driving in a car right now, but if you're watching from home or those of you in here, I just want our posture to be a little bit different right now. And what I want to invite you to do is just to open yourself up. And as we approach a new year and we begin to take the turn around 2020, I want that to be our prayer, God, that you would produce something new in our pain. So Father, we... We come to you right now. And God, too often we don't think about the posture of prayer enough, but throughout the new covenant, oftentimes when we see prayer, we see a specific type of posture, whether people are falling on their face or falling on their knees. So right now we're just opening our hands up to you and we're asking, God, we're asking. And we're letting you know that we're ready to receive 
whatever it is that you want to give us, that you can produce something new in our pain. We know it's possible because you work in all things. God, you work in all things. And so if there's anything in anybody's life right now that they put outside of the boundary lines of where they think you could potentially work, God, would you remind them that you work in all things? And so, God, would you produce something new in our pain? God, as we step into a new year, and we know we're not completely on the other side of this, but, God, that we wouldn't allow this season to go to waste, that we wouldn't do what typical Americans do, which is when everything kind of gets back to normal, we forget things really quick, and we just bounce back to wherever we were before this. No, that's not where we want to be, God. We want to step into this year. We want to leverage our influence. God, we want, you, we want you and we invite you to teach us something new now. We want you to produce something new in our pain so that as we begin to extend ourselves, when we step into the storms of other people's lives, when we're willing to get wet, when we leverage our influence, when we make ourselves available and interruptible for the Holy Spirit and we step in, when we carry one another's burdens, as Paul tells us, when we do that, we actually fulfill the law of Christ. God, we want to be prepared for those moments so will you produce something new in our pain. So Father, we invite you to do that right now. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. For those of you in here, just take a moment and hang out for a second. But for those of you watching online now, we're gonna go ahead and conclude our service. Thanks for being with us. Don't remember, or don't forget, don't remember, that's horrible. Don't forget Christmas Eve service is coming up on Thursday, two, four, and six. I believe our four o'clock is almost already full, so you're gonna have to look at two and six, but we invite you to come and celebrate the birth of Jesus with us. So we love you. Go be a trace. 